And today uh, is such a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker today. And Brad, he's a handsome dude. Uh, he's an amazing man of God. He has been preaching and blessed so many men. He's preaching men's conferences um, in Australia, and, and you are going to be blessed today. And he came with his amazing son, Blaze, and uh, you are going to um, receive, and I want you to open your heart, I want you to open your mind so that God will speak to us. So why don't we just give the warmest welcome for Brad Patterson. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And thanks, Blaze is still throwing the balls that we started with that get me. <laughs> oh, thank you for the welcome. It's such a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you today at The Rocks. It's actually my second time at The Rocks. Just bear with me while I get set up. I snuck in a few months ago with our family and um, uh, on a Saturday we were down in Perth all the way from Muck and Budin. Say Muck and Budin to the person next to you. Muck and Budin. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just love the vibrant worship in this place. It's fantastic, isn't it? You're really blessed to have a worship team like that, and, uh, and Pastor Daniel and Pastor Mike. I actually first met Pastor Daniel when I was studying at Bible College, and he actually, uh, I was doing DVD, external college out at Muck and Boudin. I'm actually a sheep shearer, yeah, shearing sheep, yeah, amen, I get one down, brother down here, and, um, and uh, I used to shear during the day and study at night do, to do my cert for Christian ministry, and then uh, Pastor Jan Daniel was actually the lecturer of a, a subject called hermeneutics, which if you know is, is about how you interpret the Bible. So I just want to stay, state up front that if you have any problems with my interpretation of the Bible today, please see Pastor Daniel because he uh, taught me absolutely everything I know. And I hope he hears that in the podcast. <laughs> um, so if you go to my little slideshow there, my family couldn't be here with us, all, all, all our family, but that's my wife Sky and I've got three kids, Blaze, Seven, Chloe, coming up five and Shakira coming up three and you know that means I had like three kids five and under has anyone ever done that I'm always yeah I'm looking for survivors out there come on there's got to be some survivors some hope light at the end of the tunnel it's crazy and um, I met my wife when I was shearing down south at a, a pub uh, called Jeremungup at a town there at the pub there and she was a beautiful barmaid that was pouring some fantastic beer at the time and I was a, a thirsty shearer that come in after shearing with sheep and, and we just, we seem to connect and ever since it's just been that chemistry. <laughs> no, she's the love of my life and she would love to be here today but she's praying for us at this time and believing for uh, really good things in God today. And um, so that's a bit about me and the Muck and Budin Church of Christ um, which is where I grew up in Muck and Budin and um, my great grandpa was actually the first pioneer Set in Mucka, there it is there. So Mucka Boudin's about 300 kilometres sort of northeast, only a little bit northeast of Perth. It's sort of halfway to Kalgoorlie. It's what they call in the middle of nowhere. And uh, that's where we live. And uh, yeah, my great grandpa, one of the first pioneer settlers there. And um, so, I've, or, you know, you walk downtown, you're related to everyone. You want to know what you're doing tomorrow, just ask someone, they'll tell you. And, uh, and I love Mucka and I've had the privilege as a 10-year-old, we had a travelling evangelist by the name of Glenn Weeks who would sing the gospel and preach the gospel. And he came through our town and he, he spoke and sung at the Muck and Boudin Church of Christ. And you know, as a 10-year-old, I remember hearing the gospel, what we've sung about tonight for the first time, understanding that Jesus Christ loves me so much that he died on that cross for my sin and that I could be forgiven and find life in him. And as a 10-year-old, I came forward at that meeting when he said, anyone want to receive Jesus? Don't receive a religion, but receive the person of Jesus Christ. And I came forward that night, and I remember to this day giving my life to Jesus at the altar, at that altar where one day I'd actually eventually seen your pastor of the church, which I did a few years ago, and it was such an honour and privilege to do pastoral ministry in the in the pulpit and the place that I first found life in Jesus. And uh, so I'm passionate about the local church. I love what you guys are doing here. I love your vision. I love where you're heading. I think it's exciting. I love, I really love your catch cry, no perfect people allowed. I was going to say that's why my wife didn't actually come. <laughs> and uh, hopefully she's listening. But I really do love that on a, a serious note. Um, it, it's, it's what it's all about, don't you think? Don't you think the world's sick of self-righteousness and churches looking like you've got to have it all together? I'm so glad I didn't have, have to have it all together. 
But Jesus said, just come as you are. He says, I did it all for you. The gospel is spelt D-O-N-E. It's done. You know what you do, but it's what he's done. Amen? Oh, I'm getting excited now. I've got to get into this message. Woo! So in the time I've got left, I want to share with you what I would call my life message. And what I mean by that is this is a message that I, I lived today to get here. It's a message that I've been living for a few, quite a few years now that God's taught me. And I call it a winning word in the wilderness. You guys are good. That tech team is awesome, aren't they? You've got a great tech team. A winning word in the wilderness. You know, I, I'm a big believer that God's word causes God's people to win in life. And I believe that just as much that every person in life will face wilderness type experiences you know like a a wilderness is a dry place it's a barren place it's a hard place and and you only have to be breathing to experience them I I remember a couple of years ago as we were traveling back from Victoria and um, getting excited about my brother-in-law's wedding and he was going to be marrying my um, one of our friends from Muckambudan and I'll never forget and she just can't forget as we're getting all excited and I was doing the ceremony because I'd done some pastoral ministry, as I mentioned, and so I was writing out this ceremony and getting all the vows ready. It was just such an awesome time. But yet two days before the wedding, we had dinner with the couple, and that night my brother-in-law went to bed and never woke up and died that night uh, in his sleep. And um, suddenly we hit a wilderness of grief, a wilderness where my, my wife's life, my life, their family were just shattered. I remember, uh, I can never forget, February the 10th this year when I was out shearing and um, get a phone call from my wife saying, I think, I was actually, sorry, it was actually from my mum saying, I think you should ring Sky. she's at the hospital with Blaze and they're doing some blood tests, I think you should come and uh, check, see what's going on, she sounds worried. And I said, oh, there's nothing to worry about. And um, I'll never forget getting the phone call after him getting flown to the Royal Flying, on the Royal Flying Doctors all the way to PMH this year, February 10th, saying from the doctors that he'd been diagnosed with leukaemia. And uh, suddenly your life hits a, a wilderness. And uh, my little champion sitting in the front row has just finished six months of chemotherapy and absolutely smashed it. And, um, <laughs> and, and you, just, you just, life happens. And, uh, you know, I like, what I really believe is this. I believe that being a Christian doesn't disqualify you from adversity, but it does qualify you for victory. Oh, I love that. Being a believer won't disqualify you from the hard times, from the realities of life, from the pain. God doesn't say, oh, you believe in me now. I'll just put you in a little church and sing Kumbaya every day. No, but he actually says, yeah, you, you are still qualified to go through some hard times. But I want to tell you, if you're in Christ, you are qualified for victory in every wilderness that you go through. And God taught me this lesson a few years ago uh, in about 2010. We're traveling to North Queensland, um, Townsville, to pastor a church up there in in Queensland. And at this time, um, after my wife having the the birth of our first son, she was experiencing terrible, terrible back pain. Like, not just a sore back, but it was just shocking. She couldn't get out of bed. Uh, She was just in tears in the morning. Just If you've ever experienced back pain, uh, I'm a shearer, I know a little bit about it, but it, it just is crippling, isn't it? And I remember she went to the doctor and she came back from the doctor with... Her tears in her eyes saying, you're not going to believe it, but I've got a degenerative bone disease in my coccyx and, and my, my, my bone, backbone is actually degenerating that much. They said I've got the back of a 70 plus year old woman at the time. She's in her, her mid-twenties. And uh, her dream was to have more children and to have a family and suddenly we hit this wilderness in her health and she had to wear this big back brace everywhere she went with magnets on it. And... Um, we went over to check out this church in uh, Townsville to t- look at a job of pastoring there. And I remember that morning, I got out of the hotel room and I got on the balcony and I grabbed my Bible and tried to make a habit of doing it, just reading the Word in the morning. And, you know, at that time I was really saying, Lord, I just don't want to read your Word. <laughs> I, ho- I want to hear your voice. And uh, I don't want this to be religious, you know. I once used to read the Bible just out of religious routine. Oh, i just got to read my Bible because apparently that's what they said makes you spiritual. <laughs> but now I read my Bible out of desperation because I need the life of God in me if I'm going to make it through another day. 
And so I remember picking up my Bible and I remember that morning reading Proverbs chapter 3 and around verse 5 to 7, it says this, Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. And you know, as I was sitting there reading it on my balcony, it was like, man, I think it's like God just spoke to me about our wilderness experience we're going through, about this hard place, about skies back. And it's like Jesus is just saying, I'm going to bring health to Sky's bones. So what I did was I got put my Bible down and I ran into the hotel room and I found Sky and I said, I've got this scripture, I'm going to pray this over your back. And I laid my hands on her back and prayed this verse and prayed over it. And you know, right then and there, absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> nothing. So, but I, I really felt I'd, I'd had a word from the Lord. I really felt this was God's promise to us, to his people. And so we got back to Makambudan and I did what the Bible says. I called some of the elders, the, the leaders and friends of ours in the church over to anoint the person with oil and to pray the prayer of faith and that she would get well. And we gathered around and we all laid hands on her back and prayed again the prayer of faith. And right then and there, absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> and as so it seemed, so it seemed. But I was convinced this was a word that God was promising to me. I was convinced that I wasn't reading my Bible, but I was talking to Jesus. And so I got that scripture and I printed it out and I put it on my fridge and we would look at it every day because that's where I spend most of the day, the fridge. And I'd see it every day and I'd always be meditating on it and speaking it and believing it. And did you know we ended up taking that job in Townsville, flying over there. And so this is a space of three months of just believing that. We got off the plane and Sky has never worn her back brace since and it's been, that was 2010, so it's been nearly five years. Never worn it since and had two more kids and, and, and never had that problem again. And I think, well, it just, but if, do you know what it's like to go through things that, some, you know, you, you trust in God but it just doesn't happen like you think it's going to happen. You might, have, you might be at the moment in a, a financial wilderness and you're wondering how you're going to make it to get rent paid and you, you know that you just, it's not about just God drop it out of the sky, but what's going to happen? How's this going to work? And I really want to encourage you today that God has a winning word for your wilderness. In the book of Joshua, go to my text today in the book of Joshua, which I love the book of Joshua, because it's all about God's people when they cease from wandering around in the wilderness, the wilderness, and they step in to the promised land. They step into that 500 seat auditorium at Carousel. They step into their next thing. They, 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 not that you are in the wilderness now. Don't take that the wrong way. But uh, no, but wherever you're at in life, I see, I know what it's like to read the book of Joshua and actually feel like Joshua's reading me. Because I know what it's like to get out of Egypt, which was the place of slavery and sin, the place where I was in bondage. I know what it's like to have Jesus forgive my sin, but yet still be wandering around the same issues, the same addiction, the same fears, the same problems, the same stuff. And suddenly my life just looks like every other person that doesn't believe in Jesus. You're just in a wilderness. But God's desire was not to stay in the wilderness, but that you'd be able to step in. And Joshua was the man to take on leading the people into the wilderness. Let me just read a bit of Bible because you like this guy. Even read the Bible? Does he even believe in it? What's going on, guys? This is what it says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Have you got your Bibles there? It says this, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying this, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I love the language of God, every place that your feet tread, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness to the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Ephrates, all the land of the Hittites and all the great sea toward the going of the down of the sun. This is a lot of territory. This is a, a, this is a vast place, shall be your territory. See, God's got big plans, hasn't he? He hasn't just got a 500-seat auditorium. He's got a whole city. He's got a whole area. He's saying every place you go at your work, when you're getting your hair cut, when you're in the shops, every place when you're getting your lunch, or everywhere your foot goes, if they can smell your smelly feet, the kingdom of God's coming. Come on. And it says, this shall be your territory. It says, no man shall be able to stand against you. Before you, sorry, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. 
Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Stay with me. Do not turn from it. He's about to tell them something very important. Do not turn from it to the left or to the right, right or left, that you may prosper wherever you go. And then I love this. Chapter, verse 8, this is the key verse that I want to take you to today. He's saying, as you go into the promised land, he's saying, this book of the law. Someone say the book of the law. 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 This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. I just want to settle on that verse. Then you'll have good success. As they're going in to where God would have them go, as they're going from the wilderness to the promise, I want to tell you, The timeless truth is so simple yet so powerful as this. In that one verse, and I think it's on the next slide on its own, that one verse, it just says, this book of the law. And what is the book of the law? Let's go context of the day. The book of the law to the people then was, let's think about it, was God's word to God's people, wasn't it? That was what the book of the law was. I mean, it was all the other stuff that was involved in it. But in a nutshell, the timeless truth is this. If you want to step out of your wilderness into the promises of God, I believe it's God's word has to be of utmost importance in your life. I believe it's God's word that will strengthen, sustain, and give you every success as you go forward. It won't be self-help. It won't be the power of positive thinking. It'll be the power of the very word and the, of God and his promises to you as you go forward. Does that make sense? He's saying, my word is so important. Jesus put it this way. In uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, he said this, Man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's saying that your life doesn't come from food. <laughs> That's your, your physical life. But your life comes from what God says. Your life doesn't come from what your boss says about you. Your life doesn't come from what your mates say about you. Your life doesn't come from anything else but by the preceding word of God. And that's why I'm passionate about this message and I'm about to give you some real good tools to go away with and to use is because this has literally changed my life and I've used these principles in every season of hardship, in every season of a wilderness, and they work in your life. God's word actually works. If you just want to be religious and read his word because it's, it doesn't, it's just all blah, blah, blah. But God's word actually works when we say, Lord, what are you saying to me? So I want to give you this tonight just what he said in one verse, the way to treat the winning word of God. Are you ready? Number one, speak it. Someone say, speak it. The text says, do not let this book of the law, the word of God, depart from your Facebook status. Sorry. <laughs> Don't let it depart from your fridge door. Don't let it depart from your thinking. No, it's saying don't let it depart from your your mouth. From your mouth. There's something powerful about having the word of God coming out of their mouth, speaking the word of God out of their mouth. See, I believe if the devil can get the word of God out of your mouth, he can get the will of God out of your life. When you think of how they took on the book of Joshua, how they took on the promised land, their first city that they took over was Jericho. Think about how they defeated Jericho for, if you know the story, they marched around the city. Their military attack was nothing. They marched around it for six days, one time, and the seventh day, seven times. And you know the story, we used to sing in Sunday school and the walls came tumbling down. How would they come tumbling down? Just when they let out the roar, the shout of praise to God. Well, they just spoke out what God said to do. It just came out of their mouth. Even stepping into their promises, they needed to have the word of God in their mouth. And I'm telling you today, that's the same principle for us. If we want to go forward, I want to ask you, what is coming out of your mouth? Because that wall around Jericho was threatened by the voices of the Israelites. And the wall that you've got to break down, the issue that you've got in your life, the stronghold. See, Jericho was a place of sin, a sin city. And its walls were impenetrable. A bit like addictions and sinful things that we can get caught up in there. They seem impenetrable. You've tried this and you've tried that. But can I tell you, if you start speaking to your wall, you'll start to see a crack in it. 
you start speaking to it. I remember when with Skies Back, we just started speaking that verse every day. I just started saying, we fear the Lord and shun evil. We're not perfect, but we're trying to live for Jesus. And he's bringing health to our bodies and he's bringing nourishment to your bones. This back will heal, be healed. And just started to have the audacity to speak it, to speak it, to speak it. When you think about what God did in the beginning, it says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. He created the world with his word. Your world could be the sum total of how you speak. You may be creating a world at work by the words you use. I know what it's like to work around people that don't want to be at work. And you can tell by what comes out of their mouth. And the atmosphere changes. That's why I love getting to have to get to church. That's why I have to be around faith-filled people because I want to hear the praises of God coming out of their mouth. I want to feel it lift my spirits. The word of God in their mouth. When you think about even Jesus, even our Savior, when he had to face his wilderness experience, do you know he went through the wilderness too? And the Bible says that when he was in the wilderness, the devil came and attacked him. And he attacked him and he said, Jesus, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And then Jesus said this. Every time he answered the devil back with three words, they are, it is written. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The devil, it is written. What was he doing? Out of his mouth was coming the word of God. He was speaking the word of God. If Jesus had to do it, you don't think, I have to do it, I've got to do it. If Jesus used the word of God as a sword in his life, then you and me need to. Because the Bible says the sword of the spirit is the word of God. You need to have an it is written for every area of your life, I believe. It's not if you're going through a wilderness, you need an it is written. You know, John 10.10 10 says that Jesus came to give life and life to the full, but it also says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if the devil is coming after your peace of mind and attacking your mind, you need to have an it is written, he shall keep in perfect peace, he whose mind is stayed on you. When the devil's coming at you and attacking you with fear and anxiety, you need to have it is written. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. When the devil's coming after your finances and says, you're never going to get out of debt, you need to have an, it is written, you shall supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. I shall lend and not borrow. When the devil's coming after your kids, you need to have, it is written, I have trained them in the way they will go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Oh, when the devil's coming after your life and your future and says it's hopeless, you have no hope for the future, this thing you're going through is going to take you down, you need to have an it is written. Jesus said in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Yes, it is written. Have you got an it is written in your life? Because man, when you've got an it is written, it's not what Brad says, well the newspaper says, no, God says, and that settles it. It is written. You know, some people think this whole speaking the word of God's a bit new agey. I really believe it's Bible agey. Because Proverbs tells us, and I think the next scripture there says that uh, life and death, or this one says the power of life and death is in the tongue. The power of life and death is in your tongue, in what you're saying. I want to encourage you that you need to have an it is written. You need to be speaking the word of God. Whatever you're going through, having it is written. I'm going to move on to my second point because I'll just, I mean, the next two are quick, but I just love that point. I just love speaking the word of God because I have seen it turn my anxiety into peace. No, it's not my anxiety. You know, and Jesus took anxiety at the cross. You know, it doesn't belong to you. It's not my fear. Jesus took fear at the cross. Jesus took sickness at the cross. When it's, it's done. I don't, what belongs to me is what he gave to me, which is his righteousness and his prosperity and everything that belongs to him now belongs to me. Thank you, Jesus. But the second thing to treat the word of God, don't, don't only speak it in your life, but soak in it. The next part of the scripture in the point number two says, but you shall meditate. Someone say meditate. You shall meditate on it day and night. That's why we put the word on the fridge. That's why... Well, you've got to be marinating in it. I like what the psalmist says. He says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, if you can really meditate on something, I don't know if you're into meditation or not, but put your hand up if you've never, ever, ever worried. That's right. Worry is a form of meditation. 
We do it naturally. It's the, it's the wrong use of our imagination that God gave us is worry. Worry is the curse of imagination, I believe. But the right use of our imagination is to meditate on God's word, to meditate on God's promise. So we would just, I would go to work, I'd think upon this thing. The word meditate means to mutter to oneself, one of the meanings. It, it's self-talk. You know, you're not crazy if you talk to yourself. It's actually biblical to talk to yourself. You need to sometimes pull yourself in the corner and have a little coaching session and say, right, we need to get things sorted out. We need to start thinking differently. Meditation is about the, where your heart's at. It's about what's going on on the inside. See, so often we're meditating and we're thinking and worrying about things that don't usually even happen. Whereas we should be meditating on what God is saying, what God is doing. If you squeeze an orange you'll get orange juice. I'm pretty clever, aren't I? I'm a shearer. I'm a sheep shearer. I thought of that myself. (laughs) If you put a Christian under pressure and squeeze them, you should get the Word of God. You should get the Word of God. It'll stabilise you in your storm. The Word of God. We've got to learn to, to meditate. You know, I'm not a big fan of flying. People say, Brad, such a man of faith, is scared of flying. I'm like, I'm not scared of flying. I'm terrified of crashing. <laughs> anyway, I didn't like it. I had to do a lot of flights to go to Townsville when we moved there. And I, and I held on to one quote while we are flying the airplane. And Smith Wigglesworth says this. He says, I will not be moved by what I see. I will not be moved by what I feel. But I'll be moved by what I believe. And I believe God. So I'm on the plane. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do that. Oh, don't not moved by what I see or feel. And I look over and I see these little, you know, people white-knuckling it around me. They look like they've flown before. They've done heaps of flying. Why are they, what, what's wrong with them? What are they worried about? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not moved by what I see. And, and then suddenly you hit some turbulence and you're up and you're down. I'm not moved by what I feel. <laughs> That's what life's like. But I'm moved by what I believe. Smith Wigglesworth said, what I believe is what moves me in life. So I just started to repeating it and, and meditating on it. And what I did was I had a soaking word for the journey. And whatever journey you're in now, whether it's a hardship, a distress or whatever, you need a soaking word that you soak in. So I just kept just believing. That, that's a biblical word. It's a quote, but it's a good biblical word for me. It's not out of the Bible, but it's what the Bible's saying. And I'd be like, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. Lord, I'm moved by what I believe, Lord. And I believe that you're with me. I believe that you hold me in the palm of your hand. And I believe even if this plane crashes, everyone else will die, but I won't. I'm going to (laughs) live. No, I didn't really think that. I didn't really think that. But Lord, I'm not going to think about that. (laughs) Someone once said, your life is the sum total of your thoughts. Joyce Meyer puts it this way, where the mind goes, the man follows. She says, set your mind and keep it set. Can I encourage you today? Soak in the word of God. Let it marinate in you. And I'm going to finish on this last point to move along and... It's this point here, which is to step out on the word. You've got to speak it. He's saying, Joshua, speak it. Then he's saying, soak in it. But then he says in the last part of the verse that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. He's saying, Joshua, I don't want it just to be in your mouth and in your mind. I want it to get into your movement. I, I, I want my word, what I say, to get into how you live your life. I want you to be obedient. I want you to do what the word says. You know, James talks about don't just be mere hearers of the word but, but, and so deceive yourself, but be a doer of the word. Now, my little quote there, it's not just about knowing scripture, but it's actually about obeying a saviour. I really pray that you can take that away from this message today, that it's not just about Oh, yeah, good, Brad, good message. We should uh, learn the Bible, do my memory verses. It's more than that. It's actually, it's actually wanting to get that word in you so much because you know your life depends on it. I know my kids' life depends on it. You know, as these winter months come around in Muck and Budin, we've got a wood fireplace, and as the man of the house, it's my job to make sure that that house is warm, that there's wood burning, that, that, that my kids are, are warm. Otherwise, what happens is the cold comes in and the family gets sick. Everyone goes, <coughs> yes. <laughs> but it does. The, the, the house gives an atmosphere to sickness. And I believe in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. As the man of the house, it's my responsibility to make sure that my house is warm with obedience to the word of God. That my kids know, yeah, we do go to church and we do love God. Yeah, we do read the Bible. We do pray. We do these things not because we're religious, but because we follow the living, living Jesus Christ who rose from the dead and walked straight into our lives. 
And that's what I want you to get out of today, that, that it's about stepping out and doing it. You, you, God's goal is more than just getting it in your head and giving you great theology, but it's about giving you great experiences in life. It's an adventure with Jesus, isn't it? In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, he says. I have overcome the world. When I think about this story, I can't help but think about Peter. And uh, when Peter stepped out of the boat, you know, like uh, all the disciples are on the boat and uh, Jesus is coming, walking on the water, and they think it's a ghost because a storm's coming up. And suddenly Peter looks up and says, is that, is that you, Lord? Like, who is it? Is it a ghost? And Jesus says, yeah, don't, don't be afraid. It's me. And, Jesus, and Peter says, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus just says one word in my Bible, says, come. And Peter, can you imagine him like, just getting out of the boat? Everyone else is like, <laughs> could be a ghost, could be Jesus, I don't know, but... Peter, you're mad. That's why I love Peter. He, I'd rather get out and try and have a go and sink than never get out of my boat at all. That's just my thing. And so he's like getting out and he starts walking. And Peter, all he had was a word from the living word. He said, Jesus is the word. And he gave Peter a word. And he's just hanging on. And, and in all his circumstances, he says, no, Jesus said, come. I'm just trusting his word. I've got a winning word in this storm. And he started to walk on the water, and Peter had a supernatural walk about him because he trusted in the Word of God. And I'm here tonight to tell you that you'll get a supernatural walk about your life. You'll walk above depression. You'll walk above defeat. You'll walk above poverty. You'll walk, walk above these things because you're hanging on to a Word. In it, even though you're going through what everyone else is going through, they look at your life and they're saying, what is it about you? How come you get through this? How come you overcome? And you say, it's nothing to do with me. It's the overcomer living on the inside inside and his name is Jesus and you've got to get him in your life and Peter is walking on the water <laughs> everyone's like yeah but didn't he sink I just like to stay on that point he's walking on water supernaturally and yes he did sink <laughs> but as he sunk you know the story Jesus reached out his hand. He said, Lord, save me. And I'm here to tell you, maybe you started off your faith journey well. Maybe you're here tonight and you're going through a rough patch. Maybe you're here tonight and things are getting a bit sinky. Maybe you started off, you heard Jesus and you were once on fire for the Lord. Maybe you're here tonight and you're bound by sin. Maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus at all. I don't know where you're at, my friend, but I do know this. Whether you're sinking or you're getting out of the boat for the first time, Jesus says the same thing. Come, come. And if you're starting to sink, he said, his hand is right there to catch you. His hand is right there for you. Whatever you're going through tonight, his hand is right there. And he's not looking at you with eyes of judgment. He's not looking at you with eyes of religiosity. But he's looking at you with eyes of love. And he's looking at you tonight and he's saying, I just love you. I just love you. I love you. And so as I close tonight, I just want to know, where are you at? Where are you at? Do you believe in Jesus? The Bible says that he loves you so much that he gave his one and only son, John 3, 16, that whoever goes to church enough times. No, it doesn't say that. It says that whoever believes in him, not a religion, a person, will have eternal life and never perish. You know, when I first thought about that, I used to think, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I remember as a 10-year-old, yeah, do I believe in Jesus? Well, I know I believe he's real. But it took a step. It's a bit, it, it took a step to really... That's what believe means. Believe means to get on board. You can believe that the plane's leaving from Perth to Sydney tonight and you can have a ticket. You can go there and you can believe all you like. But you've got to step on board. It's like that famous tightrope walker, Charles Bondon. Anyone heard of Charles Bondon, the famous tightrope walker? Oh, cool. He's so cool. He was crazy. He lived a long time ago, but he used to do crazy tightrope walking across like uh, city buildings and all sorts of stuff. And one time he set a tightrope up at Niagara Falls. True story. Google it. Niagara Falls. And he's got the tightrope there. And he's going to do this awesome tightrope. And there's a big crowd coming to watch him walk across Niagara Falls. And then he goes all the way across and the crowd's looking in amazement like he could die. Look at what he's doing. Gets to the other side and does something weird. He goes and grabs a wheelbarrow brings out this wheelbarrow, looks down at the crowd and hushes them. And he said, uh, do you believe that I could go back across with this wheelbarrow, with somebody sitting in it? They're all thinking, and then they all yell in unison, we believe, we believe, we believe. 
And says, you sure you really, really believe that, that I could push this wheelbarrow across Niagara Falls and someone, a person could be sitting in it. Do you believe that? And they all yelled in unison, we believe, we believe, we believe. And then Charles Bond and hushed the crowd and said, who's it going to be? And it was dead silent. See, a lot of people said they believed. But to actually believe is to put your trust in and actually get in that wheelbarrow and say, I believe you with my life. I'm giving you my life. See, Jesus gave his life for you. Will you give your life to him? And you get in that wheelbarrow and no matter what happens in life, no matter who leaves you, no matter what you go through, no matter the pain of the past, you've got a saviour that will hold on to the wheelbarrow and will direct you through every storm. And you don't have to worry about steering anymore because you've just believed and trusted in him. He will be the master of your life. And if you're here tonight and you've never said yes to Jesus, you say tonight, or I'm far from God and I need to get back in the wheelbarrow. In a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer and we can all pray together. But I want to know if you would say to me, yes, Brad, that's me. I'm here tonight and you wouldn't believe that what you're speaking about is so relevant to my life and I want to put my trust in Jesus. Can we just bow our heads and close our eyes out of respect for God and one another and I'm just going to pray and ask Father God I thank you for this word tonight you put on my heart give all honour and glory to you Father that by your spirit you are speaking to people's hearts right now in this place I ask you Holy Spirit reveal Jesus to people in this moment and change lives forever so as I said I'm going to ask you in a moment if you want to join me in this prayer while you Eyes are closed and your head's about. If you want to join me in this prayer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask you to slip up your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come out the front, but in a moment I'll ask you to put up your hand and say, yeah, Brad, I, I want to be in this prayer. So as you're praying, I know that I know that you're responding. You want to respond to that. I won't ask you to come out the front, but I will just say, hey, put your hand up in a moment and say, yeah, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to come back to Jesus. So right now, if anybody's here, you just say, yeah, that's me. Just raise up your hand and I'll see it. I know that you're praying this with me. Yes, thank you, sir. I see that hand. You can put it down when I've seen it. Two hands there. A couple, yep, see your guy's hand. Thank you. You can put them put them down when I see it. Yeah, a couple here. Thank you. See them hands. Anyone else saying, yeah, this? Thank you, guys. See your hand. Oh, at the back there. Thank you. See your hand. Sorry, yeah, another one at the back over there. Thank you. It's just great to respond. It's not about me. It's not You're not responding to me. You're just saying it's something about stepping out in faith saying, yeah, God, I'm serious. Sorry if I'm missing anyone. If I've, I'll just look over one more time. Raise your hand nice and high. If I haven't seen it, if I have, that's fine. Just going across anyone else. Yeah, thank you. See that? Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. This is an awesome moment between you and God. So I'm going to pray this prayer. And all this prayer is, is simply trusting in Jesus to forgive you of your sin and to come and live in your life and make the difference that I've been talking about. So why don't we, as we pray this, I'm going to invite everyone in the congregation to pray it together with me in support of the people that have lifted their hands. And and you say, maybe you're here before I pray. Maybe you're here thinking, why do I pray a prayer? I'll just tell you quickly why. In Romans it says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, in other words, you're trusting Him for your salvation, and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's not my message, this is Jesus' message. So why don't we all pray this after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you tonight, a sinner in need of your saving. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, for my wrongdoing. And I ask you now, Jesus, forgive me of all my sin. I give my life to you. I believe that you rose from the dead. And I ask you now, come fill my life. You died for me, I'll live for you. You died for me, I'll live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's put our hands together for everybody that made a commitment. And before I hand back to Pastor Mike, I just want to encourage you, put up your hand and you'd say, 
It's between you and God. Like I said, he's done it all. But if you want to come down to the front after, if you put up your hand and just want me or Pastor Mike to pray with you or talk with you through anything, um, I'd be honoured to. I'd be honoured to. Because what I'm here for and what it's all about is not great sermon. It's not about this. It's actually about you connecting with Jesus. It's about seeing God make a real difference in real life because I've discovered that's the only thing worth hanging on to. Yeah. It's been such an honour. Thanks for having me. God bless you. Wow. Let us thank Brad one more time for an awesome word of God tonight. Wow. You know what? It is God's purpose for every single one of us to, to live in His Word and really in, live in the reality of God. You know, Brad could speak because he has lived in the wilderness and came out of it as a victory, with victory from God. You know what? I love when, when he said that it's being a believer doesn't disqualify it doesn't disqualify you from adversities but it's, it qualifies you for victory so it is our challenge it is our heart to, uh, our desire to see each one of you to live life in his word and come out as victors amen because we are more than conquerors why don't we just pray for Brad and really just bless him his family and his ministry so right now if you don't mind just stretch your hands towards him and pray for brad thank you so much lord for an awesome word of god and lord we don't want to be just a hearer of the word but we want to be doer of your word and we want to bless this man of god we want to bless brad sky blaze chloe and shakira lord this family will live for you forever and people will come to christ just seeing their lives seeing the uh, the credibility that they have living life in the wilderness and knowing that God is with them. And that is the most powerful strength that we could ever have, which is you are with us. So Lord, we want to pray for his ministry that every single word that comes out from his mouth would be so powerful and, and people will come to Christ through his ministry. And also as, as, a, as a father of three, Lord, I pray that you will, you will show your love um, <clears throat> to people around him, just knowing that he's such a great dad and a great husband. Thank you, Lord. We bless the, the, their family in Jesus' name. And Maka Bunin, we pray that Maka will, 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 will have a revival uh, by having a pastor like him in that, in that uh, area. Thank you so much, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we would like to, once again, thank you, Brad. We want to invite you to, to invite your friends next week. Um, Aaron Edwards will be here to preach uh, the Word of God. And if you look around you and you see someone who regularly come to church but they're not here, give them a call. Make sure that they're okay and say, hey, you don't want to miss next week. And if you have a friend, neighbor, or a workmate, I want you to invite them and bring that uh, flyer that we have outside and give it to them. You don't want to miss this because we, we're going to have an amazing month uh, in August. So thank you everyone for being here and we know that you're going to have an amazing week. So why don't we just stand and receive God's blessing and receive His Word. Thank you so much Lord. We believe that Your Word is yes and amen. <clears throat> so Lord, we believe in the power of Christ who lives inside of us. And, and we receive your blessing today. May the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the love of Jesus Christ, and the help of the Holy Spirit, who always encourages us, teaches us, rebuke us, will always be with us to go through life, whether doing good times or bad times, whether doing um, <clears throat> the experience on the hill or experience on the valley. Lord, we are going to go through life knowing that you are with us and we are confident that we're always going to become out as victors thank you so much lord we receive your blessing in jesus name everybody say amen amen have a blessed week god bless you everyone